Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with our fourth Let's Build at Animasia. And today it's the Hasegawa Idol Master Mirage. So far we've got three of our finished builds on display in this cabinet. For anyone unfamiliar, Animasia is a very old, one of the very first uh, hobby shops in Australia that stocked uh, Gundam and non-military models of uh, the anime, uh, fantasy, sci-fi uh, genre. It's got a small selection of uh, Gundam and uh, other Katabakir style kits, uh, figures, whatnot. A lot of interesting bits and pieces and quite a few models on display. We have a bit of a competition space as well as a workshop. A bit messy today. I will be using everything equipped here and a couple of bits and pieces I bring from home to assist in finishing my builds. Uh, the challenge is to do a little bit um, every time I'm here before work and uh, finish it here over time. So this is a very early example of an old uh, standard kit. Mold's been tooled a long, long, long time ago for the military enthusiasts. Uh, the model's not very special, pretty cheap, 48 scale Cold War Mirage. But they get the license for things like Idolmaster and whatnot. Put on a very cute box art and some decal work or a large sheet of decals to entice a completely different market of uh, customers to get into modeling and buy uh, tooling from the exact same mold. It got even crazier when Girls and Panzer, Kantai Collection, all that sort of thing became quite the rage. If you thought Bandai was terrible with getting the same molds, adding an extra uh, runner, decal sheet, color scheme and just uh, flipping it for a, a much higher price or just recycling the same uh, mold over and over again, Hasegawa, who also shares space in uh, Shizuoka, is the absolute master of uh, special editions. Let's open it up. I believe this aircraft also appears in a video game, uh, Combat Ace or something like that. I'm not a big gamer. The first thing we met, and it's uh, been in the roof for a while. Like I said, it's very old. I bought it for 20 bucks second hand. And we've got a very large water slide uh, decal sheet with uh, all of these little silver dots orange dots, lines, and uh, what not. Might have to put a clear coat over it uh, in case it's uh, disintegrating. In between the actual uh, markings, it's a large clear piece with uh, updeen dots on it. Uh, in between is uh, this white flaky bit. So I'm not too sure if these decals are still good. I'm going to cut off the corner soaking water and see what happens. Let that soak. A lot of the uh, whites around the edges have sort of just vanished. Decal works without an issue. Slides quite easily. It did split, but that's probably because I was uh, impatient. I'll put it on a surface to make sure, though. The decals should be definitely fine by the moving factor. Placing the decals at the bottom of the box to protect them from further damage. We're given uh, this plastic sheet with uh, the runners in it, the clear parts in this uh, little bag, and there's a sticker floating around saying made in uh, Poland. Uh, didn't, uh, was aware that they were really big in injection molding over there. This tiny uh, baggie of uh, three resin parts. And uh, quite a collectible looking instruction sheet with uh, the picture of the girl. Uh, so far a figure of her uh, could not be found. And a comprehensive very large colour guide of uh, all the markings and colour scheme. So they did quite a few of these aircrafts in uh, multiple scales depicting each girl from the show Idolmaster. Now, I understand that uh, Idolmaster is a series of uh, games, uh, shows, comics, uh, depicting a large number of uh, young schoolgirls uh, 
trying to train up or become professional idols or an idol pop vocal singing dancing group. Uh, pop groups do seem to be a thing in Japan with uh, very young teenage girls. It's got the paths breakdown, uh, the colour guide using uh, Mr. Hobby colours uh, by the looks of it, and straight into the instructions. They seem clear enough. You get the uh, internals, pilot, all of that sort of stuff. Doesn't look too complex. Uh, Mostly everything focused around uh, the cockpit and landing gear and the rest of it just uh, slips straight together. Do you have to mask the uh, canopy a bit. The challenge is all going to be in this uh, scheme of uh, painting it straight uh, orange. Might uh, mask off to do the nose cone. And uh, the rest of it is going to just be pure decal work, clear coat and... Uh, polishing to get all these uh, dots and white lines and everything in uh, just right as well as uh, rescribe the uh, panels a bit deeper and run a black wash throughout it's going to be uh, yeah quite a challenge it's uh, double sided it's just going to be mostly a, uh, a masking thing you definitely tell just by the very small parts count that this is a very, very old model. It uh, relies on a bit of uh, raised detail. Uh, the mold's a bit leaky, so there's uh, flash galore. And the cockpit pilot is uh, quite basic, sort of like 80s style. Uh, looks like the kit was released sometime around the early 2010s late 2000 so it was uh, right with this uh, estimate I remember as a time all the hobby shops everywhere in Japan everyone was uh, selling these and people were just buying them up being a fan of the franchise though I just really never saw many people buy it to the point where uh, online websites are just selling them cheap I think I bought one or two and uh, I have no interest in the aircraft or all the uh, character though this was uh, practically given to me for nothing and I set it aside to build it with uh, no expectations. There is a bit of cracks in the uh, decal so that could be fixed since evidence that uh, works quite uh, well uh, still applies. So we've got uh, no excuse but to uh, build it. Uh, it should be a lot quicker of an experience than uh, predicted but uh, due to how uh, much of a challenge this will be with uh, seam lines and fitting and whatnot of such a, a vintage kit being paraded as something newer by the very modern uh, box art I could see how this would have turned off a lot of people with mixed interests uh, off uh, modeling or buying it and just never pulling it off you can tell that this is definitely from the frog fx era as uh, you've got a central uh, very very thick um, sprue and you keep getting thinner as it uh, branches out and into arteries and uh, you don't have a frame around it so it's uh, quite uh, flimsy and it's prone for parts uh, breaking off and getting in all sorts of uh, trouble and looking quite close you can see there's a heat um, the formation um, on the sprues and the edges of those missiles are pretty much more than a one mil thick uh, flash. Anyone that only purely glues it together, and uh, because it's already pre-coloured, the idea is to just quickly glue it together, chuck on uh, the decals, and you're done. It won't be a very pleasing finish, so we'll put a little more effort than that into it following the instruction. Not too sure when this resin will uh, play its part, but uh, we'll find out. Uh -huh. uh, the clear pieces, parts cut out, get a nice close look in that uh, cockpit, nubs cut, trimmed down with a knife, sanded, as well as all the flash around the edge where moulded also sanded. This process will need to be required to be done to all parts. This is the collection of uh, tools we'll be using. The cement will stick things together. Uh, there's no ability of uh, snapping or parts holding together without glue. Again, an older style kit, what I'm used to from my childhood. The console's glued in the cockpit. Once cemented in, it's going to turn into a putty state. It'll take a few hours to dry it until it can be uh, handled sufficiently. Parts chopped out, uh, 
these uh, nubs here are very very annoying to uh, remove I just cut them across leaving as much excess as possible to trim off parts cleaned up the uh, flash around the chair was particularly nasty we've got the first half glued we'll let that uh, set quite a bit before we stick the second half uh, to avoid uh, movement or uh, adjusting later on scouring a plastic got the seat that can uh, fit in there we're not going to glue it in yet so we can glue in the control stick the seat is most likely going to have to be painted a different colour to the rest of the assembly. We will uh, find that out. Now to my distress and the colour guide, it's all in Japanese. I've got the uh, H uh, series colours for the... Oh, I've got the H series colours for the Mr. Uh, Hobby acrylic range. So I can just Google that and find out what they are, what's suitable to paint the cockpit colours. But uh, right now my hands are a bit tired so I can assemble, I can prime, but I can't paint until the next session after I run off with a list and write things down. The joystick has been glued in, the pilot is chopped up, nubs removed in a way where the fine detail in the folds of the clothing has uh, not been disturbed. Cement applied to the stump. Glue together. At this angle it looks like the little orange man's having a fap. Now for the life of me with these instructions I can't make uh, out how to do these seat belts. So I might use some masking tape or just forget all, all together. But everything uh, separated as uh, such. Uh, there's quite a bit of uh, painting instructions. The dude's glued together. We'll separate the fuselage and uh, prime for the interior. Lineup of parts so far. Main fuselage going in, unlike the wings, the detail is raised instead of uh, scribed. Definitely cannot be bothered sanding that down and rescribing. And the internals, nothing special. We'll have to chop and clean up. Though inside here, we have to do a bit of uh, priming and painting before assembly. Clean manner of removing these nubs would be near impossible. Now, they're in an area where it's not visible, the wings would be glued there, so it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, if it was in a physical or a visible area, you'd have to use a saw or, if you're very confident, um, pry it out or course it with a knife and snap it off, uh, clean it up. Though, we'll just uh, cut it out since I'm not too uh, worried about gorging out the plastic. Definitely gorged out the centre, but the rest of it's alright. Bit of sanding and I think uh, that could be saved. Looking around the edge of the parts, there's a little bit of flash and other areas that are just unacceptable if it was to be painted. So around these edges will definitely need to be sanded. So the nubs have been removed, all the tags are cleaned. There's uh, throughout a few nooks and crannies where there's just a bit of uh, paper thin plastic or tag sticking out that initially look like a uh, detail. So it's due to how thin it was, it was uh, removed, looked at the instructions, clamped them together, and it seemed right. So you can see that there are no more nub marks. Sticking it together, you can see that there's a bit of a, a seam gap. I can keep talking. There's a bit of a uh, seam gap. Uh, there is a few tricks where you can mask and do putty work so you're not interrupting the raised detail. I'll uh, show you how to do that but it does not hold together like the modern kits that snap today. We'll colour in. We'll only prime where it's visible from the top and bottom hatch, as well as these three pieces. Here's a bit of this. Normally I airbrush, but I'll do a nice and quick job. Ideally, shake for about two to five minutes, so you've got an equal amount of uh, aerosol thinner and paint, you can get maximum use of uh, the product in the can instead of just running out of air and having paint left at the bottom, as well as having a very fine mist that does not flood any detail. We'll hold it about 10-20 uh, centimetres away and dust it on. Now, I won't uh, demonstrate as I don't have a tripod today. So we've got the pieces primed. Now the only reason why we need to prime such a little bit is we're only going to see a bit of plastic in the wheel well as well as uh, the cockpit and uh, that's how much overspray you get out of a rattle can. So that's done. Next day we'll quickly sand up the uh, edges where the glue will uh, contact 
and uh, paint her up. These three pieces are also primed ready for individual uh, painting. All of it will go together instead of using cement. We will uh, go by wood glue or PVA glue as to not uh, reactivate the painting, cause any sort of damage. You can tell that plastic is not normally this obnoxious of a colour as uh, the orange is bleeding through in some uh, corners and areas that the primer has not quite uh, covered uh, evenly enough. Being a wet coat thing, I do much prefer priming via airbrush uh, for this very reason. Last night, I looked up on Google, typing up the word Mr. Hobby, and either the H number first, as I'll be painting with acrylics where I can, failing that the number next to it to find out just roughly loosely what color it is there's things like black semi-gloss black flat black i mean black is black for now i can adjust the finish uh later a very old kit but just get an idea to make sure i'm coloring uh, the figure the cockpit the landing gear roughly right the rest of it's going to be the fantasy interesting orange and white that it is Mind you, unless it's a military assigned colour, tooling of this era is definitely going to be inaccurate. And here I uh, gave a, a quick uh, diagram of uh, what's going to be coloured what right on the instructions for uh, my ease since I can't read Japanese. We did a terrible translation job of uh, this and it works out that the part's not really included, uh, at least my boxing isn't. And the best way around it is cutting it out of uh, paper as suggested, or better, foil or tape. Uh, I've got some one mil tape, so I'll do that if I'm up to it. We'll start with the black ejector seat, uh, green for the figure, silver for the base, and the inside grey. All painted. Next is silver, guy notes. Absolutely lovely luster of a colour, huge bottle. Looking pretty good, all covered. Now just something as a bit of warning. We've got a glue mark here by applying too much cement and sticking it down. Now this part of the model won't be visible, so that's not a big deal. But when you glue something down and you've got a clear build up like that, it will really show through primer and paint and would need to be sanded out. Same with uh, down there, there's a glue mark for sticking down the joystick. So it's just an element to be wary of. I'm going to paint the console uh, black and detail. With brush and paint, we've done the console black. Uh, the edges of the detail of the console has uh, bled through, though that's not a huge deal. Uh, we'll tidy up the floor a bit later. Once solid dry, we'll uh, chuck on the decal. When not hand painting, I've been using the Ophir airbrush and a Hyacinth compressor with tank. The figure will be painted in camo green, just happens to be the right shade by chance um, laying around. Completely green, even coverage. You can see the bleed is no longer an issue. As per instructions, the black details are painted in. Dry brush there, bit of different tone of green. Did the helmet white. It will need a second coat due to the transparency and nature of the colour. I sprayed the inside grey and just a touch of a uh, tinge of green. The inside of the cockpit's been neatened up. Painted his uh, little mask, little dry brushing. Touched up his uh, helmet even further. We'll give him a wash. Little uh, Tamir accent colour. His uh, clothing creases and detail are very deep so it looks a tad over exaggerated. About right for the period. So through uh, the cockpit of the uh, canopy, it shouldn't be too noticeable. It's roughly the right no. colours. The panel has been cut out, soak that in some water for a little while. The decal has been applied as well as a bit of a clear coat. The side panels probably should be black to match it all together. More of an artistic choice. We'll do that and dry brush a bit of silver. Black paint was overly thin so the silver controls have come through very nicely it's a lot less work for me we'll uh, glue down the chair and the pilot uh, for parts that are painted instead of cement i like to use pva or wood glue dries clear very slow drying but most importantly not being a solvent it bonds parts together without reactivating 
or disturbing the paint. So I can definitely work at my leisure. Bit of uh, cotton Q-tip and a blob of glue. Pop of glue in the cockpit. Uh, some at the bottom of the seat. We'll just sandwich it together. All together. Uh, should dry clear as such. Same thing with the figure. And there you go. Now I know a lot of people like to put aftermarket parts, um, the seat belts, all those other things. I'm not overly fussed. I'm not going to be that focused on it. Though, for my first uh, properly done cockpit in an aircraft in many, many years, can't complain too much. So that's uh, good as done. Um, that's as far as we've uh, gotten. We'll close up and pick it up next week. For the sake of putting and drying, I always find it a bit funny that things like uh, missiles are done at the very end where you have to glue, wait a day, dry, sand, put back together. I like to do these all the same with guns and similar detail on Gundams much earlier. So by the time it comes to this stage, we're not uh, stuck on it. So we'll cut them out and glue them together at least. Putts card out. Uh, these nubs are not easy whatsoever. This one, I don't even know how. We'll just cut it out and bend it off, I suppose. Oh, Jesus. Exterior ejector pins. We're really dealing in the past here. Lucky that I had this uh, tool, a special file. I was able to make a uh, quick work of that. Nubs removed, the flush around the edges have all been cleaned up. It's uh, been a bit of work. The other side for comparisons. We'll cement it all together. Glued applied. Nicely cemented. The extra thin will fit in that nice little uh, slit. And just pop it in. The fuel tank is all glued together nicely. Got a uh, Mr. Dissolved Putty, which is really, really smooth and has a filling property. A micro Q-tip. We were able to dab right across the seams, which would be very easy to sand with uh, light grit sandpaper during the next session. Uh, independently prime it. I might remove those uh, plastic nubs and uh, replace them with actual brass pins and uh, have it being able to be attached later. So we can check if there's any imperfections before the painting stage. Or maybe even paint it early. No matter how you put this down, the putty's going to touch something and get messed up. So I'll skewer it up for about 15 or so minutes before putting it away, allowing it to skin over and uh, putty up in a harder but not ready to touch surface. So the edges where the glue is going to stick has a bit of primer on it from painting the internals. With just a bit of uh, sandpaper, we're able to remove that layer off so glue or cement can properly adhere. Do the same to the other side. Done. And we are back at it again. The putty is dried. Some 800, 2000 grit, which is whatever was laying around. All sanded and polished. Next, a big batch of Tamir primer. Filled up and ready to go. Nicely done. Bit of work has to be done at the fuel cap and the rest is ready for further painting as it is a different colour. Or not, I was actually wrong. Gotta clean the airbrush and gotta assemble the missile. Nice big old tinner thinner. Does the job to thin the paint as well as clean it out. A few flushes and a wipe. Applied Mr. Dissolved Putty on that problematic split seam. We'll uh, PVA the cockpit into the cockpit. All nicely glued up. I dropped a thinner bottle and we all shit bricks. Spilt a small puddle and picked it up on the first bounce. No glass anywhere. Aren't we lucky Dante? <laughs> it's uh, pretty cemented in there good. Well, we'll see how it dries tomorrow. Found some random crap on the floor, so we're using it as weights to weigh down the nose as I forgot to bring in some appropriate weights. The seam line sunk, as it does when things uh, dry and shrink, more putty was applied. It has occurred to me that I may as well glue the wheels together as well. Parts all cut out. Sanded the seams for a second time. Chuck a second coat of primer. 
and see what it fares Looking promising so far. Nubs and flash removed. Cemented together. Cemented together. Doing a dry test fit. Walls are thick enough for glue. You can see where the uh, pegs stick into each other. That's just to help the glue hold together and guide into place and not to stay in place like a snap kit. We'll uh, put some cement in while holding the fin. Cementing the edges. Clamp down for about 30 seconds till the glue oozes out. You can stand back and prime to see if that's enough for a seam line filler, but I believe a, a bit more or a small line will do with a putty and sanding, but assembled nicely without any fingerprints issues or problems. All assembled, a few hours required for drying. The wheels probably just need a bit of sanding along the seams. They have uh, quite a bit of uh, texture on the treads. The armaments themselves will need to be suspended and puttied. Small part safekeeping. Dissolved putty and a micro Q-tip. And most of our armaments together and drying. I think it's important to talk about time period for drying and whatnot as this is done in a few hours over multiple days instead of a larger longer term sitting um, session. When two pieces are glued together in the way of seams and whatnot, I put putty over it merely half an hour to an hour later. After it has been applied, then the part is set aside, normally in a way where the putty can't be disturbed nor the glue, and not sanded or touched for a good 24 hour session. This is where primer is applied, uh, inspected, more putty applied again, and another amount of time passes. Same with the PVA. PVA is very, very, very slow drying, takes a while to get clear and gummy. When the cockpit or the pilot was uh, glued in, those components weren't touched for a good uh, 24 hour period. So something that comes together like this, it is definitely a several session project and something you can't uh, put together mostly in one sitting such as a Gundam or some 70 second kits. We're attempting this instruction now. Did not make a lot of sense to me exactly how it goes in. So I did some foreshadowing and having a look at multiple parts of the instructions right here to see what it looks like and the majority of the wall is actually on the inside and need to be covered, coloured before it uh, could be or the two fuselage halves are glued together. You can still see the seam in the actual uh, sketch CAD drawing. So we'll cut them out, glue them in and put the whole thing together. Remove from runners. Now normally what that means is a component is being removed. It would be these uh, pull parts all cleaned up. A dry test fits and it actually clicks into place so it's safe to chuck in some cement. Cemented in generously. Stupid fire alarm. I suppose we'll deal with it. We've got the two components glued in. Had to be a bit uh, sensitive with that one. We'll uh, paint them. Guy note silver and brush. Keep your brushes clean. The points are... Uh, or the very uh, points in a points format. And you can always get some uh, nice hand painting going. So that's all done. Well, this is going to be all glued up, so might as well use the inner of the fuselage to hold our glue palette. I honestly haven't done this in years, especially something this big, probably when I was 15 or something. I got lazy, so I glued the Q-tip inside the fuselage. Got the inner bit of the uh, cockpit uh, ready to seal at the other side and some more nose weight which is uh, this part I found underneath the uh, table so it should give it a enough weight got one over there the bottom and the wing of aircraft are very heavy so they have a tendency of uh, sitting on their uh, rear side so a little bit of weight in the nose balances it out freely nicely so it's uh, something that most aircraft modelers practice We'll glue the edges with uh, Tamiya cement and see how we go, hoping it all fits together nicely. The edges are cemented quite thickly, lead sandwich. Got to really solidly clamp it down with two hands, normally rubber bands or something else are used, but I don't mind if the seam's slightly open as long as I can putty it down and sand it. 
find the gluten in one piece, but it's going to cause us some issues unless we reinforce it. And I propose putting a bit of super glue around the edges, letting that, that sink in, and then putting on top. Around the edges have had a small amount of super glue applied into the seam. Now the reason why I did that is it is a poor fit filler. It's not going to level it out nice enough where I sand it and it's going to look flat. What it is going to do is be a very strong binder inside of that seam line. Putty is very good at leveling off, sanding off and being flat. Though any sort of uh, change in the plastic uh, expanding and retracting, uh, any sort of force or uh, measures can make it split over time, especially some putties being quite soft. I find putting super glue in first just holds it and bonds it to a superior uh, strength where it's going to stay as is and then putty going on top of that to be uh, sanded down and holding its shape. You'll get the best of both worlds in two layers. It is extra work but I haven't had any problems with the models that I applied this technique on. Now the importance of this model is it does split at certain points. I put super glue in it. I'm going to be putting a very uh, thick, some squadron uh, putty through it all. Sand it back and a later session of the dissolved putty. So there's going to be a couple of uh, rounds of sanding, putting and priming to get it absolutely right. Because unfortunately right down the center there's no major decals that are going to be applied uh, to hide things. I was also careful not to have the super glue or glues uh, drool over the raised detail. Being an old kid it doesn't have uh, panel detail. Very difficult to uh, sculpt though not entirely impossible. And ran a bit of super glue down the seam on the inside of the model for added strength. So practically in short we are doing step six. I forgot to mention it's also important to put putty over super glue as super glue is a harder material than plastic and if you just sand super glue you're going to be wearing down more plastic than the glue thus leaving a raised ugly area. Using squadron putty we've uh, got the seam all the way around covered as well as there uh, sanding next. Uh, this is dried and it's looking really good nothing has split we'll call that a day back again I think I may have a little bit of sanding to do wheels are sanded we won't have to touch that until the wheel assembly goes together now the armament missiles to our right we've uh, sanded it with 800 and buffed it up with a few thousand to the left it still has its putty intact but to the naked eye it's very uh, not so noticeable you might be able to feel it with your finger once primer goes on you will see a surface tension uh, consistency difference uh, which we will uh, clean up the left and then prime. Sanding all finished up. Looks absolutely spot on. We'll see after drying if nothing doesn't sink. Done! The removal of this seam is going to take a couple of attempts. So we'll uh, go first layer, another layer of uh, putty, dissolved putty, the primer after assembled, and a few more times. Now for the dissolved putty, I've just been using 800 and a few thousand grit sandpaper, but super glue is harder than plastic. So we started with 120 grit and worked our way to 240, just to get it flat enough. Uh, when the wings are glued on, the gap will be absolutely minimalized. I think I need to get some fresh sandpaper and uh, plane it even smoother. Also down the side there was a bit of a uh, drip of uh, either cement or super glue that was uh, dealt with from 120 grits all the way to 3000 grits so it's nice and polished. Small bit of raised detail has been eliminated. Next we're going to go around and getting rid of all this uh, squadron. We'll just lightly buff it up with the 120 and work our way out until it's nice and polished. Being um, the sandpaper is uh, harder, or due to the sandpaper, the putty is softer than the plastic. There will be some scratches and bits removed. It will need a second session of dissolved putty. I've mentioned this in a few of my Let's Builds. I like to label all of my grits so I can see them visually as well as touch them when using them. I was just leveling it out with the really high grit. Getting through with the next grit. 240, you can see it's a bit creamy from the 
powder mixed with water. Save the bottom of final sanding with the nifty U-Star files. And the seams have been nicely sanded all the way to the highest grit of a few thousand. So these joints should be pretty good. But we'll go one more round with some dissolved. While I'm at it, I've done some follow-up putty on these armaments. And all applied. We'll uh, give it overnight to dry, we'll sand it tomorrow and continue assembly. Store it so putty is not damaged. Allowed overnight to dry. Sanded all the putty around the seams. We will mask the canopy, but shall stay save this step for last. Clear components. Appropriate time to pull out the god hands. Do a double cut. I am so upset. So now we have the ultimate nipper. Let's risk the cut down the side and see what happens. Not too happy about that. How about that? It worked. The edge has been trimmed and polished to the best of my ability with 4000 grit sandpaper and a knife. Fits well enough so that is not a problem. Mask up the canopy with masking tape. Got our SMS as well as Tamir as example we'll just lay it on and cut along the edge to see if that works it's stuck on and I made a marking of the edge of the glass we'll uh, put a knife in cut it out and peel back this process is completely tedious and not fun whatsoever well that took uh, way too long to do so I should mask the clear bit it'll be see-through it'll be the last bit to paint peel off and glue once the model's 100% done so we don't have the same uh, fogging issues we did with the Star Wars kit. If following these steps I'll glue the bottom wing first and we've got to chop out a bit of material then for seam line purposes add the upper wings last. The part, the fact that my wings are not fitting well it's a very very poor state of affairs Trimmed the bit that won't be very visible. Look at the metal build, eh? New toy. We needed to sand the piece flush. We needed to cut and sand the uh, landing gear doors uh, flush. And finally, we've got a flush pass. We can uh, probably clean her up a bit and glue her. I'm seriously getting sick of these funny looking nubs. Tried slicing it up, but this stresses the plastic in a different direction, so you just can't win. The part is completely cleaned up. Quick look underneath. Put a generous amount of Tamiya white glue. Sandwiched together. It was a bit of effort. Had a bit of glue dripping. Uh, wiped it up. We can buff that out later. Not a big deal at all. And underneath is not too bad. Bit of a seam. Uh, that can be covered up as a little bit of material has been removed, though nothing too bad. It's uh, pretty split there too, though. We'll deploy the super glue method. With a brown paint marker, I've marked where I have a couple of glue stains to be strategically sanded around the detail and polished. Uh, the rear split has been sorted with super glue on the inside and clamped for a number of minutes. And as soon as a bit more drying occurs at the bottom there, we'll chuck a little bit of filler. Putty has been applied in the appropriate places. We shall chop these up. Again, very strange runner. Very common to uh, the period with older models before they completely encapsulated around the part and had smaller sprues or gates. At the end, the part curls up slightly. I'm not too sure if this is a feature of the kit or a deformity in the moulding. The part all cleaned up inside and out. I'm just absolutely not used to gluing parts this big. I think it's a function of old models. It's really aerating, giving quite a bit of a smell. Kind of brings me back to doing these 35th aircrafts when I was uh, quite younger back in school days. All together, clamping it down. You can see that there's a bit of a gap here, so I was correct. The curling was a deformity and a bit of a gap there as well we'll fill all that out same for the other side glue town only one side clamp together and hold it for about two to five minutes until it's in a putty mushy state where it's holding together by its own strength it's still going to take well over a few hours to dry all together run a bit of super glue down those deformed seams q-tip 
a little platform and the super glue was used to run down along the seam allow that to dry before we put dissolve the putty as we're waiting for drying we'll just only mount the armament mounting underneath the wings so that's got a chance to dry I want to uh, pin that so the armaments are completely separated and can be glued on after painting not quite before. We're really jumping around the instruction sheet purely to take advantage of our drying time and getting as much done in this small effective session as humanly possible. We've got the mounting points cut out. These uh, mounting points has a flash all the way around. Even most of it would be covered or glued down. It's good practice to clean it all up for correct and proper fit. It is tedious to trim and sand each of the four. There's nothing escaping how terrible these parts are. The detail is all rised, raised, yet there's ejector pin marks which I believe are not supposed to go there on a mirage. I'm unfortunately going to have to leave them on there but there are decal work and painting schemes that go over it that should uh, make it not as obvious with uh, the lack of a sludge wash or any weathering. All cleaned. Uh, one nub is larger than the other which uh, fits in these holes. We'll cement the back of them and stick them in. They do hold on their own. So it shouldn't be too much effort after glue has been applied. Just notice some sort of copyright mark and gone. All glued into place. As straight as I can humanly get it. Sanding up the wing bits and that should be about it for the week. We'll uh, come back and continue after several days. Hello and we are back. So I found this uh, book, the Master Mr. Hobby book, an updated version. I haven't seen one of these in a few years. And it sort of just uh, gives you a rundown the compatibility and all the uh, different products across the Mr. Hobby range that has uh, particular uses or um, normal modeling application from candy coats, clear metallics, military, whatnot, their acrylics, enamels, and uh, lacquers. It gives you tips from everything uh, across uh, Gundam to uh, tanks and whatnot. And it goes into a great amount of detail on things like uh, how top coats work, the uh, pigments uh, sit for clear or matte, the accretion line, and uh, it's a pretty in-depth hand painting and airbrushing techniques, maintenance theory, all that sort of thing. So if you get your hands on uh, one of these in English or Japanese, especially if you're on the beginner to intermediate spectrum of uh, the hobby, or just after a complete catalogue of everything that's available and you don't know the difference between Mr. Surfacer 500 and Mr. Surfacer 1500, this isn't really a bad book. Now, going straight into uh, the build, it's been a week since we touched it. Let's have a little peek inside. The fuselage is mostly together. Uh, the seams have been re puttied with Mr. Dissolved Putty. There's some other bits that's got a, a rougher putty. We've got lots and lots of uh, sanding to do and luckily we notated where a lot of that work has to be done. Uh, nah, the armaments are looking pretty good and there's a little bit more to add. But for now we're probably going to do something to protect those decals. I'm going to pour a little bit into this container. I'll probably use a fair whack of this product and onto our decal sheets, we've got uh, outlined lines of the confines of the clear part of the decal. And where we have the decal, it's uh, got this almost uh, scattered or frosted uh, finish, but the paper itself is definitely starting to break up and not looking too good. So we're going to give it an extra layer of protection via the future by looking at the outline like here, the 765 and just spreading a bit of extra clear right on top just for the purpose of making it stronger don't apply it too wet because it actually is going to uh, soak up and uh, lift the decal, affect the uh, backing 
of it and that's uh, not going to be very good so just start uh, lightly paint on some clear so that's been applied nicely by brush I haven't seen the paper soak so the decals shouldn't be worried what I'm slightly concerned is where the clear coat has made contact with the decal paper where it's all cracked it's uh, turned green and we've had uh, some sort of uh, mold appear on the other side so this decal sheet definitely doesn't have long to live so it's uh, pretty, pretty much a race against time to get it used up and applied on this mold before it is completely dried out and useless We'll give it another coat tomorrow, but today it's just going to be about sitting around and drying. We have to be careful of uh, the raised details, and there's quite a bit around, so we try to putty and sand as close as humanly possible. And we've got some raised areas out, so we just soak a little bit of sandpaper, it's a 200 grit, fold it over, and we're just making contact with where the putty is. And I'm constantly just sanding a bit, feeling where it's raised, where it's not, and just eliminating that giant. There's going to be uh, some that gets eliminated. That's not a big deal. If this was uh, a traditional aircraft, you would have to re-scribe it, re-put down the detail, or just remove it altogether. But as we've got all those uh, spectacular decals going all across it, it shouldn't be too much of an issue and it's sort of uh, dying down quite nicely wipe the uh, excess water which is also putty scum for tissue and we move down to the next grit and start to polish it out nicely and we just touch it with our finger to make sure it feels somewhat right and in the end putting down a, uh, a primer coat will visually uh, tell us if the seams um, together looks right, doesn't look right, if it needs uh, additional putty, scribing, whatever. So we are technically working a bit blind here. But that's pretty much uh, the whole process of uh, applying putty and removing it. Very tedious and almost an hour's work all the seams are sanded and you can see that the white is really um, obvious in some of the edges it would have been most likely visible once painted and after priming I reckon some of it would have uh, sunk or moved so there might be one more session gonna have to re do that little section with uh, dissolved putty so these micro q-tips are very useful it's just a basic case of uh, dip and dab color in where the previous uh, putty was to make sure that any tiny air bubbles, cracks or whatnot are completely covered. And it's not very hard to do. It's quite soft and easy to sand as well. So I can even see a few uh, holes and whatnot. Now I believe these parts are optional. I don't have to use them. Uh, being uh, what looks like resin, uh, of course I am going to completely use them due to how expensive and hard they are to come by. They do normally have a release agent being cast in silicon. So we're going to have to wash them thoroughly so we don't have the issue of uh, paint beading or uh, not sticking properly as well as not needing to clean it just before we need to assemble and paint. Here it is close up. Now I'm used to a very rigid one but this is uh, practically uh, completely rubbery. Should have enough bits and pieces. So use detergent and water at the bottom. bit of water and mix for soaking or we'll just store it somewhere on the uh, shelf I don't want to put the uh, camera too high because there's a porno figure parts give it a dip and pretty good scrub to make sure we're getting all the good soap water action all over the place and all the little details, nook, crannies whatnot 
and then we shall let it soak in this uh, fluid overnight and rinse it a few times give it a, a light sanding and that should make it absolutely appropriate for holding paint pretty handy to communicate why someone shouldn't tip your green water down the sink completely out of order for the convenience and ease of the build running gear always last assemble the engine pieces in the uh, double cut method and when they talk about that what you're doing is you're cutting a fair amount of distance away so the nubs are way over exaggerated same goes for this one and there will be a second step of inspecting for flash further imperfections and join marks and as I'm confident that these are cylinders that don't have flash marks you can see right here that there's been a spillage from the mold and we've got a bit of excess plastic sticking out that doesn't need to be there we'll also run some sandpaper over it it's just a matter of fact of just carving it off and around this whole rim we're going to hit it with some sandpaper so why double cut so we'll do a second cut nice and close these are fairly uh, thin bladed nippers we remove the last of the nub hobby knife and some sandpaper file whatever you desire wear it down and since there's a bit of a line that's gone all the way around we're going to sand the whole circumference so this part we notice had a bit of flash around the ring so what we're going to do is just lightly sand it to make sure anything we can't see with our eyes is completely eliminated and at an angle focusing on the edge we're just sanding it back nice and flat I've also noticed there's a bit of flash at the top here so just at the very top we're giving it a bit of a sand and this is just a small amount of detail that gives your models that slight sharp and very very neat look when it's at the old frog monogram age of uh, casting and detail we've got some 15,000 grit sandpaper and just over the whole surface we're going to rough it up a bit give it a bit of a polish making sure that uh, any of uh, the last remnants is all gone and uh, just making the plastic more um, open for taking primer paints all of that sort of thing and this is a full process part uh, most things cut off the tree for or runners for this project has gone through this sort of process all the parts are cleaned up other side any cement is uh, going to do. I've got the Tamiya regular. It's quite strong and uh, can bond everything from ABS to styrene together. We're going to bond the parts together as there is no way of uh, snap fitting or connection. Uh, adhesion has to be done. So I've added a bit of glue into there. Pick up the part with our knife and just place it in there nicely. Push it down there so it's uh, flat and it's uh, cemented in there. We didn't get any uh, glue ooze or uh, scarring. And next step is uh, the two parts fit like that. So it's going to be sitting on that uh, inner ring. Only needs to really cement one end. So we'll uh, generously coat it, but not to the point where it's uh, pooling or dripping over the uh, nice, delicate uh, ring. Add it together. And you pretty much have our little uh, jet thruster, which is going to fit in the rear of our jet as so. Uh, yeah, I suppose you're supposed to cement it in as is. Uh, PVA glue can be uh, used. I'll uh, have, it, have it painted separately. So we can uh, focus on 
getting uh, a little bit of blue and burnt iron and all that sort of jazz. I randomly cemented a bit of sprue on top so I can hold that with the pegs during the painting process. Taking a look at the intake parts. An hour or a few hours later, that weird mold colour has sort of disappeared and we can tell the difference between the decal paper and the uh, edge of the water slides themselves. So we'll do another coat tomorrow. Intake, parts cut out, test fit. All cleaned up, the other side, all glued together, little uh, content action or contact action so we've uh, really flooded with a bit of glue to give a maximum bond strength. Next day, even though minimal surface contact with enough glue, it's uh, very strong, nothing is uh, going to break off with a reasonable amount of force. Yesterday's coat's still slightly tacky, um, thick enough this stuff can take about a week to dry, our future floor is a bit like that. I've put a second coat, a bit thick on the large decals, uh, that will be it. Won't uh, touch this for a week and hopefully it will deal with uh, the cracks and damage in the decals so we've got a stronger um, surface to play with when adjusting it on the model. Always test fitting, truck the thruster in and we can see there's a slight gap is due to this piece here being probably half a mil too high. So we'll sand it down a bit for a while. It's nice and flat and keep test fitting until you got a flush fit. Fit is pretty flush. After a bit of a rinse and a scrub we'll let it soak for a bit and then dry it down. The seam has been sanded after 24 hours of drying. Test fit the intake nice and snug through sanding. With Tamir cement, we'll cement these areas glued into place. Putty around applied, uh, blue dots to indicate where to sand next session. Missiles cut out, all cleaned up. Oh, we're going to give it another crack for another week. Besides the boneyard of airbrushes, the desk has been cleaned up and our project is getting closer and closer to the painting stage. The yeah, intake, you can tell the difference between the sand and polished one and the one with fresh putty on it, besides the fact that there's dotted Gundam lines all over it. The plastic is more filtered out and a pastel colour. It's worn from sanding and the lines are quite small, very smooth to the touch, and here the putty is still very, very rough. So there's been quite a bit of sanding. Same with the bottom, using 400, 800 grit sandpaper wet and polishing it up with a couple of thousand grit. The seams are all nicely sanded up. Uh, primer and the follow-up will tell if it's completely satisfactory. The armaments are going to need to be removable for painting, for decor work and finally attached at the very end. These little holes are not going to cut it. That hole there has been drilled further as the fuselage is on the other side and it has a nice tight fit for this 1.5mm brass rod as well as the drill bit. We're going to remove the nipple off our fuel tank here and also put a rod. Do that, it's really nothing hard. The hardest bit is getting it centered. So we take it off and because it's uh, not painted, we know where we are exactly drilling. And to make sure we're drilling absolutely straight and narrow, I'm going to stab the knife right in the center of the orange hole. Very carefully. And twist it a few times to get an opening. Like so. And now with the pin vise, it's able to uh, seat the very tip of uh, the drill bit and we can drill straight into the material. Attached and with wire cutters we'll cut it off in an appropriate length to fit it right into the hull. And there you go, it's in there nice and tug. It actually takes weight and it's completely removable. We're going to do the rest with the armaments 
but I'll putty up the little gap uh, created by the narrow passage of the hole. Get a marking, so we've got a pin right where the armament sits in comfortably, or missile. Holes have been marked out with a point of a knife, all drilled out, plugged in, reasonable amount of stability. The pins cannot be seen fairly easily. Uh, one does drop out, or it's not at the moment. Lick a PVA glue after painting and it'll be there permanently. The missiles haven't been finished and need more sanding, so I put an S on it to remind me and a little bit of more putty. But we've got ourselves a pin and a hole to attach. Last one, the missile. A hole drilled, pinned and all. Due to how thin it was really hard and you can see there's a bit of stress on the actual missile itself. A paint and primer will cover that up. We'll give it a bit of sanding to get rid of uh, raised plastic. The peg is noticeable, but once all painted, it'll just be sort of like the attachment point is a little longer, so it won't really be noticeable. We'll also finish putting it up and putting it aside for sanding. All the holes drilled out. All the armaments with pins. Now dealing with these extra bits, be gluing two of the resin radars which I ignored this a while ago. I need to cut out a small section from the wing. The resin piece is already cleaned up. All right, it's cut up and sanded. It's got a super glued into place. Poison of choice. Eh, works enough. That's a thick bit of plastic. How I removed it is with uh, some good nippers, not the fine ones like God Hands or anything. And slowly chipped away at it by cutting a small piece at a time until we completely sliced through get a file sand it off as well as uh, taking any uh, burrs or problems left over and just keep sanding until it's nice and clean as simple as dabbing a little bit of super glue so when we squeeze on a little bit of it uh, pulls up and fills the gap that's left behind. So that's uh, tacked on. Going to make sure that it's uh, level with the other piece. And there you go. Nice, flat, even. Once the super glue dries a bit, we'll get some putty on it and sand it during the next session. Last is this piece. Uh, being resin, nice and brittle just cuts off absolutely beautifully. I actually prefer it due to how much flex as a material over styrene. Wet the file a bit which I've already pre-done and uh, some wet sandpaper, a bit of sandpaper, nice and wet. Wear out those edges so we don't have a fine joining line all the way around. This has been um, casted very, very finely, so there isn't a lot of work required. And finally, did the same thing with the other two pieces, the aerials, by the way. Uh, this component is the refueling part, so we can do mid-air refueling or uh, some nonsense. Polish it up, so we're roughing up the part a bit, and it's going to adhere to paint, glue, all of that jazz. Now on the aircraft I just need to recheck with the reference. It's going to attach uh, somewhere here. So we'll just uh, dab a bit of super glue on and asphyxiate it. The instruction shows that it's very close to the canopy and it should be glued when the canopy is already down. It's some risky business, we won't do that. So we'll attempt it how it is right now and do some post sanding later if there's any fitting issues. I was very worried about the connection um, integrity and just by pretty much the membrane of a few cells I drilled about a centimetre into this piece without damaging it and put a hole in here so it should be able to attach very nicely without ever breaking in future. We'll super glue it in. Resin attached, not too noticeable, but it's definitely mission accomplished. Chuck a bit of putty on the aerials. Good old squadron putty for a big gap. And it's just as easy as a 
applying it and dabbing it on, spreading it out as appropriate, not going over any detail or causing any problems. Wipe off some excess in a minute. Chuck some dissolved putty on top and hopefully it'll be a one sand process. All puttied up. There we go. So that should fuse into the body very, very nicely. Same goes here. The pin makes me really at ease as that's not going to fall off. And that just has so much uh, surface uh, presence, it's not going to come off. The anchor points where the resin has been attached has been sanded from all the putty applied. So it should feel fairly seamless from the plastic to the aerial or the fuel intake. The armaments have also been re-sanded and uh, puttied from where they've had anchor points attached to stick in the vehicle. Getting near the end of construction, we're going to assemble the front landing gear. Parts removed, one mil removed on each side. It is a tad too much, but virtually not noticeable unless you look underneath. Clicks in perfectly where it holds into place without glue. Will glue regardless. Assembled with cement and cemented in place. Final step is assembling the landing gear. It's not very clear in how it goes together. We'll do a few dry fits, but we'll remove the parts and clean up first. Now we've done a test fit, no glue, makes all sense. We'll start a sub-assembly. All the parts cleaned up. Pegs from the landing gear does not fit in the tyres too well, so excess glue is used to fill and strengthen. All assembled. Got the wheels uh, and assembly mostly done. All built, and to be absolutely Honest, I'm completely burnt out from working on this any further. The uh, cleanup and fitting has been a very, very long journey. We've done some basic masks of the bottom of the canopy parts for priming and painting, as well as covering up the cockpit as to not get any paint on it. I'm going to prime everything up and have a look for any errors or faults. I have a big batch of pre-thinned Tamiya primer ready to just shake with a ball bearing in it and add straight to the airbrush. About 16-17 PSI thinned beyond 50-50 We've only got one wing painted and that way when that's nice and dry I can handle that and start painting the rest but I'll do it in small sections. In case I uh, mess up with the blue tack that I applied over the cockpit I've also sprayed around that edge. So it's a bit more primed, taking it step by step allowing it to dry in stages. All the other small sections, missiles and whatnot is also primed and dried. The seam lines are not popping or separating, so they've uh, come out absolutely perfect. And the canopies are also quite ideal. Got the bottom completely sprayed, getting a bit closer to being primed. We can see we have sanded around all the seams, the edges of the wings, tail, all of that goodness. And also underneath. When reprimed we shouldn't see any sunken seams or putty left over. It's a bit hard to visualize the putty uh, with such a bright orange. What you just saw was adding pre-mixed Tamiya primer into the airbrush, a pinch of thinner and using the, bu the bubble jet technique to mix it all up. I've uh, sanded it all up and what we're doing right now is just respraying over where it's been sanded, nice and light. We're going to do uh, all angles of the aircraft except for the wing that I'm holding on to. 
and we'll spray that a little later once everything else is nice and dry. There's not much to it when I'm done. Just clean it up and empty it. We have a tighter, nicer grey finish, less imperfections. There is a bit of white around the nose cone, the wingspan, the tail, all that sort of thing. And they do come in decal form, though sometimes it is just easier to paint certain aspects by airbrush and masking rather than messing with large decals. So we'll be spraying those, letting it dry and next week masking it like a white to sit on the primer once that's dried. We're back for another week. We've uh, painted in the little uh, jets. So it should give us a bit of a pre-shade colouring. Nose cone, the wing tips, tail, that sort of bit will be spraying white around those areas. Using SMS white we've airbrushed pretty much the nose cones, the wings, the tail, areas that we're going to mask instead of using the decals which would be very difficult to stretch join and span such a wide detailed funny shaped surface I have to be a bit worried about our dry tip build up of uh, paint in the crown and splattering on the model we did have a bit of a splatter but i just jumped straight onto a dirty airbrush which is my fault the second coat would paint a little more thinned uh, with lacquer thinner melted everything down in the end we had an ideal finish Density is good, it's dried quickly enough, ready to jump straight into a clear coat so we're masking on top of that and not the paint in case we lift anything up, we're only lifting clear coat. Being a military subject we'll go onto satin instead of gloss. Thinned it about 50-50, you can thin a little bit over as it's clear, we're not really messing with any pigment and very lightly going over everything comes off very very glossy at first and then it should sort of matte up a bit and the beautiful thing about stretching this all the way to a, a 0.5 is we can get some pretty crazy coverage straight off the bat and that's it, that's about a single coat, that's all we need. Tomorrow, we'll put the mask on. And that is that. Painted the tips of the armaments. And the aircraft is drying nicely. Adding masking tape around the nose. Very small strips, the end folded over for easy picking and applied across. You want to use small strips so they don't wrinkle and paint goes underneath rather than lots of big strips which can cause issues. It is more time consuming but it'll uh, yield a better finish. We've done the exact same thing with the missile tips. Never be conservative with masking tape. It's reasonably cheap so overlap and don't consider it waste as you're not going to ruin your paints model or particularly the under bit. A clear coat has been put as a reminder and about a week has been allowed to dry. You only need a few days but I've just been away from this place for that long or not working on the project. Now it takes a lot of extra time and tape but the beauty of folding over the ends of each piece or most pieces and putting some on top of others, when it takes time to remove them you just uh, pinch and pull up quite uh, swiftly yet smoothly instead of uh, digging with your finger nail into the paintwork or the plastic to take the tape off. Removing the tape can be quite a worrisome process especially if you are you're going to lift the paint. Uh, removing any sort of uh, issues that can occur prematurely is ideal. Uh, prevention over a cure. Got the two ends taped up which have to go along the length both on top and underneath. The underneath of uh, both sides are done. All of it is taped up. For the colouring, 
I got fluoro orange and it looked absolutely terrible. The instructions just recommend I get 56 and for some reason it just does not look the same as the printed paper if it's slightly darker or uh, more pastel more lighter I'm not a hundred percent sure color I really like is far too light and uh, pretty much uh, matches the little dots they've got uh, absolutely everywhere now this one is even slightly more different and you can actually tell the difference so normally I'm not too particular about color mixing especially drab stuff I would uh, keep applying layers of uh, paint and dusting and shading and whatnot until it looks weathered sufficient interesting or just like the box art or just like the reference with this having a ton of stickers and stuff we can't deviate too much from the tone of the color to make the decal scheme and the masking scheme very fascinating so what I'm likely to do is probably add a spot of white and add a bit of this to the mix and just get something that's a bit lighter pastel -y and interesting to look at a few lumps of uh, white pigment as well as about a mil of uh, white added it is uh, to me a primer but lack of white is lack of white chuck in the SMS at a 45 degree angle we paint towards the mask got the color pretty close so happy about that we'll also paint the armament in cockpit first panel at a time no rush might go over some areas twice for even coverage Orange is a very, very light on colour, so it can look weak in some areas. I may have to uh, bump up the fuel tank a second time. Round two, slowly getting things in coats. It's going to be a slow, long build-up. Coat number three, going thin some areas. And uh, the nice, proper coat underneath. We'll give it a few minutes to dry. A little bit of uh, time to dry and a few more coats you can see on the right side it's a bit patchy because paint ran out then and we'll uh, do an overall spray everywhere and more of a focus on this wing the tail also needs to be done last because that's where I'm holding it ideally I want to hold it there but I have to do another touch up so I'm not too sure what to do using mm. Tamiya semi-gloss clear we're coating the whole aircraft took uh, two goes on the bottom one go for the tail and the fuselage and we're just about to do the two wings we've also done the canopy as well as the drop tank and a side project I've been asked to paint up which has been a pain to get into white I do have to admit this to me lack of clear is one of the finest clears I've uh, used it hasn't really it, due to its slow drying time, it hasn't really crazed or done anything funny. And when I had overspray land on it, it didn't really disturb the finish that much. Two passes and everything still looks wet look gloss, only being a semi-gloss. I'd be very interested when doing a full gloss model later, doing the final few coats with the uh, Super Tamiya gloss, how that would necessarily come out. And even on a white 3D printed surface that has had no sanding or processing whatsoever, it's got nice glimpse to it, even though you see the Z-axis lines. So, fairly impressive product. Is a bit on the slow drying time. It's what you want for a gloss. Bit of retardant mixed in. Slowly taking the mask off. Most of it's pretty good, but there are a few issues. Just a little hand painting, and it's all good. Like so. Tail looks good, but we've got a little bit more masking to go. We have the two fine stripes masked off. That's the easiest way I could uh, think of doing the scheme. Painted on both sides. Clear purple around the band. Painted the thruster nozzle or jet engine for aircraft. I'm not sure what it's called. Did a bit of the blue discoloration. 
polished iron, burnt iron on the inside to black right into the center. Missile tips masked by a few mil. Armaments are painted and painted, looking good, no major mistakes. We'll chuck a clear on it to protect it. Dr. Martin is cooking up a concoction. Yes, let me see this pie. Hello, Dr. Martin. I am quite happy how the tail masking has come out. Armaments are drying from a clear coat. We did a bit of hand painting. Just a little bit of silver in the wheel wells. And some small detail. More hand painting of small details, darker parts in particular. So the upper half painting side is completely finished. So we've got the general public outside there working on my aircraft for uh, many months now and it's just interesting families and whatnot stopping outside peeking in as I'm hand painting or airbrushing or whatnot. Uh, probably gotten many many visitors uh, during the course of this build and potentially even hundreds over the other one. Uh, pretty interesting doing it in public. So with the landing gear wheels we paint around the areas that are tricky or borders or hard to reach then we uh, colour it in. The underside of the aircraft is fully painted and the wheels. The wheels are wet and dry so it's not gonna go wheels down for quite a long time. Next we're going to be doing panel line washes. This will lead straight into the very difficult decaling process. Now having a quick look at the decals pretty much 90% of them will not be an issue except for these uh, sherbet lines which we have landing gear as well as the uh, armament connecting points in the way this can still be very possible by making uh, marks chopping down the lines and placing in installments around these obstacles so that's going to take a while probably use that as the first uh, decals during our next session and then the rest of it should be easy uh, due to the nature of just being hundreds of uh, markings a few places a few of them will be placed in the cluster or a general area clear coated dried and if there's decals upon decals then the second round of decals will be going on top uh, other areas uh, such as this big V uh, which has quite raised details is going to require the decals to be uh, cut slightly or some sort of um, setting or softening agent applied. The line accent colour is the right consistency for pin washes bit too thick for a sludge wash so using X20 Tamir thinner we're going to open it up with a one-to-one -one ratio and mix it in. This is a uh, lovely CNC metal weathering pad and you can see how the thinner and the wash dissipates in if it's good enough or uh, not to apply. Make sure to have plenty of uh, tissue or toilet tissue on hand for soaking up ex at excess uh, this way we don't have to clean up later and around the raised areas or panels we're going to sludge wash just by applying anywhere there's a uh, detail and then we can just wipe back the excess by folding it up and whisking it off. Once it evaporates and dries, we're going to have exactly what we're looking for. That's uh, already a big improvement along those panel lines. So typical of a raised or a raised panel lined kit, the few inscribed panel lines has highlighted a few bits of detail, but not a lot. The rest of it really needs to be done via 
dry brushing, but since all the sanding I've done that's really worn away, luckily the decals is going to make the bulk of uh, the interest or what draws the eyes to this project. That is the sludge wash done on the top. I let that dry for about 20 minutes, half an hour. The Tamir stuff uh, really does evaporate quickly. We'll do the bottom. The other side for continuity reasons. The jet bell as well as all the armaments have been sludge washed. The back of it which has quite a bit of detail has all been picked up. The more shallow panel lines not so much. Considering that most of it would be uh, covered up, it's not too much of a big loss. If I was to do this without all the decals, they would have definitely been uh, re-scribed or scribed in a deeper manner. Being oil based, we're going to leave everything like this to dry. And this is how I've left it to dry for uh, multiple weeks, even months now since the hull, wings and tail has gotten together. Next week and the week after, we'll start deckling. This would be a very long process, especially at the bottom. One small section at a time in multiple layers, one side at a time. Just a quick look at our working conditions. Spoon tests from a week or so ago. I stored this in the back room, which is mentioned in a previous video booth. Bit messy, very cluttered, people got their personal projects and paints and Lego and kits and all sorts of stuff and there's uh, things on the floor. It is what it is, but to have a public workplace is um, it's excellent. I snuck a Gundam UK sticker on the counter. And this was a quick 3D printed painting commission for a student's honours program. Hello, now it's been definitely two to three months since I've touched this project and a lot has happened. There'll be a picture up. The shop is closed and is done with physical business in the QV site located in the city. It is still however operating through Facebook. Uh, there's links down below and everything and still regularly getting stock. There is plans on relocating, reopening. We'll see how we go, but uh, the testing times is going to be the next six months after the new year heading into 2019. So once we start existing on the other half of that year, then things will be pretty good and hoping you're watching this video going, the shop still exists. Anyway, it suddenly closed due to the run out of the lease and other discrepancies in uh, conflicts with the site QV and uh, the landlord representative so we rapidly have to close the shop was actually seized for a period of time and I was very afraid to have uh, lost the project luckily once we got access and I took everything home it was stored long term until I was prepared to start working again and deciding how to finish off this video. The challenge was to finish this whole thing within the shop which is not possible anymore but being this close and doing this much work we may as well finish off in this video format. Uh, secondly I have uh, released and received stats of the last Animasia Let's Build videos and they're not the most popular probably because it's very very long there's lots of information it's something you can't sit down and indulge in a 5 to 30 minute uh, format but there's still a lot of good information packed in for anyone willing to learn uh, certain techniques and seeing from the very start to the very end of finishing a project. So we'll finish this video and rethink the format. If it never happens again, at least there's a few videos with this much information regarding my hobby style. Getting back to it. Early December. Have not touched for a long time. The wheels uh, broke off, so we super glued them back on. Everything's laid out, looking good, no problems. Got the decals. Don't know what I was talking about last time, but I just want to get this done before the new year to count as a 2018 build. The bottom large decal is going to be a bit of a challenge due to the missile pods actually being there. They should have been attached later. Oh well, we're going to cut that decal up and out, try to apply it, clear coat it, 
and once we get through this white V hurdle then it's going to be all easy downhill a few clear coats and final assembly well I was worried about nothing now my decal tray is quite small so it's going to be a bit of a challenge of uh, flattening it out and soaking both halves without tearing it I think with other decals we're going to have to cut them in smaller pieces and assemble them on the surface when we applied the decal these lumps here were huge air pockets and nothing was hugging around the detail there are fine cracks in the decals it is what it is though once I applied two heavy amounts of decal set and walked away they didn't mess with the paint because that's uh, been dry and hardened for weeks to months up to days to a week would be enough once the decal set was applied I left it overnight I don't normally leave it that long then the next day it hugged all the surfaces purely and beautifully didn't lift up or cause any problems day two that's when I added a, a clear coat now before I put the decal set with the two big bubbles there I made a small incision with a hobby knife and when it settled it left tiny little tears being only purely white a drop of white paint purely fixed that uh, anything else I would have uh, put a cut in the decal before I applied it and wet it so it wouldn't have teared and that would have been absolutely ideal something I'll consider when doing um, complex decal schemes like this again in the future doing the bottom stripes we're cutting them in multiple positions and piecing them together there will be gaps around the missile sections once the missiles are mounted it won't be too noticeable though it is a bit tricky measuring up and cutting applied as many as we can we've got to wait for those uh, streaks to dry ton of decal set to flatten them nicely leave it for a day before we clear coat it the side of the missiles have also got their decals as well as underneath the fuel tank this will receive a top coat this is the most difficult amount of uh, decals done we'll uh, wait for it to dry and then we still have all of that to apply but a large swash can be added clear coated weight and it's, it's going to take about nine or ten sessions to get all the decals on this thing but uh, being most of it on a fairly reasonable detail and nothing too difficult uh, the most difficult stuff around the wings are done it's very very possible the decals are far too large for my decal tray so I soak them in different sections over a long period of time until they're nice and soft as long as possible and slide them gently this one did break in half though sticking it together and putting decal set in so it can really uh, get into those grooves it's not even noticeable layer of decals applied we'll clear coat it and then add the next layer of detail and whatnot doing all the speckly spots the session will be done tonight I cut out the large sections but instead of putting them exactly where they're meant to go one or two have hidden tears and whatnot in the swirly bits and the rest will just be scattered out naturally so it's the exact amount that was needed to be on there and uh, the rest is for the front surface and they'll be the same just chopped up and placed in random areas so they don't cross things like channels and panels and all that sort of stuff all the deckling is done on the bottom end the uh, finish looks a bit iffy as it's all drying and whatnot. We'll start gluing on the munitions. All decals, they came out really, really poorly. I sincerely hope this one works, so I'm going to soak it for the maximum amount of time. And due to the fold, upside down first. Let's let that soak up, flip, soak again for a lot longer than necessary. If it breaks, it gets assembled on the surface pre-cut decals that are going to be applied during this session that decal's been in there for about 10 minutes now so it's time to lift okay we can just apply it straight away now now the beautiful thing about this tray is when it's lost you can pull it out of the water so we're not risking any of the adhesive yes she transferred nice successfully easily there was like the tiniest tear 
right in the hair did not mean to rhyme stuck it together if it clear coats fine then the most important aspect is pretty much covered the rest is very easy soaking away got to say and we're going to attempt this one handed coating these decals previously with clear coat the future has made a huge difference and it's just so much easier in not tearing or causing any damage instead of using my finger as I did in the last shoot just a blade and when everything's lubricated you lubricate the surface with a bit of water and your finger and you're able to just slide around easily it does take a lot longer for it to dry and allow you to put a clear coat on though the possibility and being put being potentially able to damage your decals is what's most important and another excellent thing you can do is write on the paper not the clear bit you can stab and pick up pretty handy all done we're gonna have to put all the circles but I think some of the caution and walking military marks might go first to create less space for all the spots and dots about one hour ago I applied a very light coat of lack clear automotive grade and unlike the white the big decal did not crack up break up disintegrate or cause any problems nor is the little decals I think it was just that two white decals that were problematic and it's coming out quite nice the hardest hurdle of this series of steps has definitely been overcome the rest is putting their little dots on all of these guys, uh, the white ones are going to be unused as we mask those areas. Overlapping markings and putting some of the warning labels. Cut out the rest of the dots. Though some of them have been put on today. All the dots are finished. Clear coat it and the final text. One more decal session. At the desk I've got some watered down lacquer clear from Super Cheap Auto. Thins twice down and we'll fit it a bit further in the airbrush cup at my workplace at home. A lot easier to work here than anywhere else really. And I'm able to work quicker as I don't have to worry about getting to the shop or what time I'm heading to work. Bit of a test spray and only one half. Just nice and easily. Double wet coat right on all the decaled areas. It's uh, been drying for up to an hour so there's no water trapped underneath. There's small pieces so they don't need any uh, decal set. And it also helps protect the larger decals the more coats of clear we build up. Operating an Ophir airbrush, an Ophir um, compressor with the strange needle no nozzle combination. It's really tapered. It goes from a 2.2 all the way to a 0.5 or greater. Uh, tiny tank, so I do take uh, quite common longish breaks to allow it to build up and I can spray with full pressure there we go and to spin it I pick it up I touch the bottom and on the armaments and put it down again to do the other side. I just want to mention with all the layers of decals the surface is looking a bit bumpy or glossy. I've put a couple of more layers down to encapsulate and protect the decals more but to self level. In the end it's all going to be a matte coat but if you wanted this glossy you would have to provide multiple layers of thick clear very very light buff 2000 or beyond not touching corners and doing this multiple times until it's a nice level surface yet still glossy it's pretty much just fully 
encapsulating those decals. But I'm not going to do that. I will add a few layers of gloss and maybe one quick buff down. Some sandpaper, 2000, 5000, 7000 grit sandpaper to take the edge off all the edges of these uh, decals. So it's a bit wet, wiped back the waste and we'll put the next layer. The last group of decals to apply. The decals are soaking. A little water on the finger and lubricate the spot. Exactly 60 seconds later, it slides on beautifully, no tools directly with my finger pulling the paper out and not tearing. And look at that. All the decaling is done. Just got to correct the finish after adding a clear coat. These are the leftover decals. Most of it I've done masking and some of the military markings I'm just not up to doing. It's too mild and not so noticeable. Last clear coat applied. A good 10 hours allowed to dry and harden. A final wet sand down. The edges when glossy can still be seen but nowhere near as noticeable as a few clear coats ago. We'll paint the bottom matte allow that to dry, then the top. At the, that point, the edging of the decal should be completely invisible due to the use of decal set and the correct layers and use of gloss clear. Nothing has silvered. Just due to how thick the decals are, mostly to clear coating the decals way back for protection is the biggest factor. Airbrush loaded. We're going to hold it like this and eventually put it down and we just apply it in dry sweeps gonna have to do it in a few different angles this is a very large surface to paint uh, being actually so much significantly larger than a Gundam it has taken absolutely ages to do each step and with the amount of uh, decals that we have to apply with, you can see why the project has just taken so long to deal with. This is going to take quite a bit longer. You can see in the uh, glimmer that it's quite frosty, still a bit shiny, but not totally dead flat but immediately dry to the touch and we just keep putting it really lightly at all the different angles to get all the nook and crannies and you're not going to see the outline of the decals and that's our little trick there you go the slightest soft sheen not super 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 flat which is okay it's what we're after we go right in can't really see the outline of anything it's looking really neat that is a finished product underneath and on the other side you can still see it's uh, problematic and glossy once a little bit of time has been allowed for that to dry we'll come back in an hour and do the top it's quite nice uh, practically dead flat no silvering no issues just removed the masking for the canopy and the actual canopy parts out. Let's remove the mask. So it's a really, really tiny micromillimeter bit of primer appearing. These look pretty good. Really hate canopies on aircraft, so they're uh, quite a bit of a pain. Got a pile of PVA glue as well as a Q tip. Glue applied to the edges. Glue added to the second half. It all fits quite well, so they just plop straight on. And just wait for all that white glue to clear up. Then we shall call it a finished model. Take, a take our photos. That's pretty much it. Oh, yes. That's what I want to see. Ten hours later, the white glue has dried. It is attached down permanently. Yet yeah, softly. And the clear piece, due to the use of PVA glue, has not fogged. 
setting up the photo booth the first thing I bought with uh, YouTube income still enjoying it got tons of natural light due to the um, atrium roof in the workshop as well as fluorescence the desk is very very messy gonna do a big cleanup soon but that's the place where I always take all my photos I have an ancient Canon G12 back in the day it was an amazing camera there isn't your model probably all the way up to G20 or something realistically it's almost the same thing in its core base function though it's got other things like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi abilities though that's how I take the majority of my photos nice and close uh, far off shots and a decent amount of megapixels and this is pretty much the conclusion to the Mirage 2000 Hasegawa 148 scale kit special Idolmaster boxing being an older kit that we mentioned the build of it is quite a challenge to have it seamless and uh, presented this far being raised detail uh, assuming greys and whatnot it would pop a lot better but such a vibrant color with all these uh, decals all the raised and um, lowered panels are just completely lost so you've got enough going on with the Atasha scheme, the writing, all of the dots, that it's uh, that interesting um, and fascinating to look at. It's pretty much fun. My build, I can honestly say that I'm happy, though it is absolutely far from perfect. There are a few mistakes that I've made in the build. Uh, the build one's not so much noticeable. The wheels have broken off a couple of times, and I should have pinned it no matter what that way I could have uh, sold it transported done all that sort of thing the biggest issue is in the paint finish the white bits that I masked there was one or two errors and I hand painted to fix them instead of uh, re airbrushed and there's one or two tiny white blemishes that are fairly not um, noticeable but upon closer inspection are so that would uh, give it issues in a competition for placing in top three and one or two decals have uh, slightly uh, torn or uh, folded over a bit again not noticeable at all unless you're actually out looking for it and the two white bits at the end of the tail did crack up which was uh, no fault of my own they were very old decals and the fact that I got this far and this close to the finish with Adam dissolving under the lack of clear or the decal set is just an absolute miracle now I don't work with aircraft kits a lot uh, the landing gear is um, a bit un not so fun to deal with and smaller scale stuff in your 70 seconds uh, masking the, can the canopies is just an absolute hassle unless it actually comes with a, a masking kit and that would deter me if I'm going to buy it and build it or not and this thing just took so long that when I was building it in the uh, Animasia store, I'd have a little bit of time between in the uh, city and going to work. Anywhere between an hour and a half to a little less or a little more. And the fact of just gluing a few pieces together, doing a seam, then putting it down, really stretched this out over uh, nine months. Now, the challenge couldn't be complete in finishing it in store as the store did close though I definitely will leave the video up um, even though advertising that location that shop is pointless it's more so of a tri uh, tribute that uh, such a shop existed with the experience of our uh, building and customers can walk in and ask questions and interacting and again it took a lot longer as people come in and I'll stop and have a talk to them film the process the steps it was a visual build where people actually got to interact, see, and be a part of the video without actually appearing on video. And I know a few of you who are in Melbourne who walked on, in on me doing this or the other two projects also got to experience it. Now this video is definitely not going to be popular as it's probably going to be the longest in out of all my other uh, content. Though just the fact of seeing an older aircraft go step by step showing that I could do it, my tactics around it and how you can approach uh, other builds that are just generally unpleasant very old or very difficult it is a challenge that I've always wanted to uh, overcome and uh, present as there's a ton of these Atasha models out uh, Atasha decal wrap of 
anime theme or girls or riding and imagery all over a vehicle it's honestly I've actually kind of enjoyed the process a bit and very very pleased you don't see a lot of them online as uh, they're very old but mostly that people who are more fan of the franchise or the original show and just not having the model uh, experience up to scratch at least they can uh, live through it via watching this video well, this definitely concludes this presentation. Thank you very much for watching it this far. I pretty much know there's very few of you at this point, though I hope uh, if you're listening to it while playing games or sitting down and watching it uh, thoroughly and going through every deckling stage, my thought, my tactics, all that to achieve this finish has been informative or at least bare minimal entertaining. A uh, bit of housekeeping. I have uh, various uh, links and sources in the description section of all of my videos down below as well as links to all of my social medias uh, Pinterest where I put a lot of work in progress and finish models as some sort of archive a communication platform on Facebook where also a lot of uh, work in progress and finished models are posted there things go in a file and it just takes weeks to months to edit so once the model's done you're not going to see the video for around one to two months they're made in advance in bulk and they're slowly uploaded every week so it looks like there's gentle flowing content instead of a burst of a bunch and then nothing for absolute months a bit of a patreon now that goes straight into the salt mines project in injection molding and other research that i present and make more content as well as uh, buying consumables and I have my own little hobby shop in Australia the salt mine hobby shop I'll link down below uh, tools airbrush supplies secondhand kits uh, anything from that definitely supports things but if you do need consumables gear tools it's definitely the cheapest in Australia and it's all tested and seen on this channel as well as actually used by myself so it's a hobby shop uh, where the modeling requirements are met first and there's a discussion of what you want to do or what you want to achieve before an item is sold or if a kit is being entertained if it is within your interest level skill level appropriate age all that sort of thing anyway at this point we're probably going a bit too far now this is probably going to be my last let's build used to be a very very popular trend on YouTube long ago just snapping something together though a bit of a scale model approach I thought would be very very informal it's gonna remain online for anyone who wishes to access it and use it though in future if a kit is interesting or unusual enough I may do another one if it's going to be at a future business premise for another um, sponsorship deal or just again in my own studio uh, that's yet to be seen but I think I'd like to do something more extreme like a third party original Gundam a resin kit soft vinyl something just at absolute left field that just takes a complete different approach that's not a Gundam and not a traditional scale model all that said and done um, very happy for my build hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching as always, until next time, stay tuned for further content, and we'll catch you guys later.